This is our second poly class, and we're going to start with a review of the material from last time, uh, encompassed together with the new material that we've covered. Uh, and um, so just to give some explanation, um, kind of a recap. Again, so the primary way that the relationship between words in a sentence is explained in Pali is through the declension, or the ending that's added to the word. So, as a way of illustrating this, uh, we have written out here the, uh, almost the complete declension of the word Buddha, which everyone should be familiar with the word Buddha, or else I don't know why you're in this class. Um, so Buddha, the awakened one. Um, so there's a total of eight declensions that are used in Pali, eight grammatical forms of uh, each word, um, and um, divided into singular and plural, so two columns, singular and plural. The eight declensions, we're covering seven of them now. We'll get to the eighth and final declension um, in the next class. We're starting with the first seven. Uh, nominative, accusative, instrumental, ablative, dative, genitive, and locative. And the eighth one, which we'll come to on a later occasion, is vocative. Yeah, so we're starting with these seven. So the nominative case is the main actor of the sentence. Uh, it's the, I, again, I'm not going to use English grammatical terms because I don't know them, um, but it's the, the, the person who is doing something, or the, the object that's engaged in the primary action. Subject. Uh, subject, precisely, thank you. The subject of the sentence. Um, so if you're saying, like, the Buddha went to the village, it would be buddho. Or you're saying, the Buddha is an enlightened being, it would be buddho. Uh, if we were talking about multiple Buddhas, multiple awakened ones, it's buddha. So multiple Buddhas go to the village, would be buddha go, goes to the village, go to the village. Um, everyone with me so far? Mm -hmm. So this is your standard form of the word. And in many grammatical texts, you won't see uh, the words written in their root form or their stem form. You'll see them written in the nominative form. So in Pali Primer, uh, we're given the stem form. So we'll see buddha, meaning awakened one. Uh, but in other books, you might see buddho given as the word. Um, and in, for example, in Thai tradition, they'll commonly say buddho. So like a very common meditation technique used in the Thai force tradition is to uh, silently recite buddho, 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 so repeating buddha, 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 but using the, the nominative form of the word. Uh, similarly, also in the Thai tradition, uh, one's name is using the nominative form. So my name, Suddha So, is the nominative form of Suddha Sa. Uh, so, Sudhaso, Sudhasa. Whereas in Sri Lanka, they commonly use the stem form. So, if I had been ordained in Sri Lanka, I might have been called Sudhasa instead of Sudhaso. Um, so, any questions on that before I move on? Questions? Don't be shy. Okay. Um, so, nominative form. This is the most straightforward. Um, accusative. So, accusative singular, buddham. Accusative plural, buddhe. Accusative is the, the direct object. It's what something is happening to um, or against um, or in the direction of. So if I were to say, I give the book to the Buddha, the form would be Buddha. Um, or if I'm going to the village, it would be a, a village would be accusative. So it's to or uh, in the direction of. So what something is happening to. Um, so again, buddhang to one Buddha, buddhe to multiple Buddhas. Are we on board so far? Um, instrumental is, as the name applies, it's the instrument uh, of action. Uh, so instrumental is by, with, or through. Uh, so for example, buddhena, with the Buddha. Uh, or by means of the Buddha. So you might say, I went to the village Buddhena, with the Buddha. Um, Ena is also used to 
uh, it's used to indicate a method by which something happens. So I, I am seeking enlightenment using meditation. Uh, using meditation is instrumental. So bhavanena, using bhavana, uh, I am seeking enlightenment. Um, instrumental can also mean uh, see, by, with, um, by means of, uh, or using. So like magena, I went using the path, um, or by means of the path. So, in, so instrumental can also indicate by means of, or using. Yeah. So, would it then, with Magdena, would it, is it always, would it always be with instrumental, or could you actually use a locative? Um, like locative, on the path? We'll, we'll get to that, but yeah, locative could be used, but it has a different sense. Okay. So, on the path, or at the path, or, or in the location. location. Okay. Yeah. So in my mind, then, yeah, that has a different connotation. Any other questions so far? Particularly than instrumental, yes. Not particularly instrumental. What's up? When you said that the name is normative, um, I was just wondering, what about Ajahn Chah's name? Is that what is Cha? What is Cha? Well, Cha is a Thai name. Uh -huh. So in Thai Buddhism they commonly go by their nickname. Um, so Cha was his nickname. Uh, I don't remember his, his formal name because uh, in Thai culture they very rarely use their formal name. Um, so he had a formal name that he was given at birth, but nobody ever called him that. They called him Cha. That was his nickname. Like, like Tom or John or Bob. Um, well, uh, Bodhinyana, I believe, was his ordained name. Um, and he wound up with many names because uh, in, in many Buddhist cultures, as someone becomes more respected, more revered, they start getting given extra names. <laughs> um, and often the names are really long and complicated. And uh, Anyway, so you'll see it written like um, uh, Bodhinyano Mahapandito uh, Maha Samaga blah 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 and then like wait at the end there and, and, and then but then you actually read the book and then it's Ajahn Chah and it's like well where did all these other names come from and why do we never hear them um, but yeah so Cha is not Pali ergo why it's not seemingly declined in any of these ways <laughs> other questions yeah Maha is a Pali word that means great or large, but Bhuva is a Thai name. So that's a mix in that case. And in that particular case, so in the Thai system, they commonly use Maha as a prefix for someone that has a certain degree of knowledge of Pali. So he was called Maha Bhuva because he knew a fair amount of Pali. So is that Maha? Well, where we most commonly see it in the canon, in terms of names, is in reference to several of the major disciples of the Buddha. So, Maha Kachana was the name of one of the Buddha's main disciples, and he was called Maha Kachana because Kachana was a very common name. So he was Maha Kachana, the great Kachana. So it's, instead of just saying like, oh, it's just John. It's like, no, this is the great John, as in like the John who's enlightened and can explain the Dharma really well. So Maha Kachana, Maha Kasapa. Uh, these are people who were worthy of distinction. That they have the Chula, right? For the other side of it, right? Um, well, Chula means lesser right. or small. Yeah. Uh, but very rarely do you see it used that way in the canon of referring to someone as like Chula Kachana. Yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it. <laughs> that would be slightly demeaning. I thought, I thought there was, I'm, I'm not for any of the um, monks of the Bikus, but I thought, there were, I thought there were a couple occasions where they referred to somebody as Chula something. Um, I've seen, there's some names I've seen, and often the literal meaning of names in the Pali Canon are really amusing. Yeah. Uh, often they're also not very flattering. Uh, so you might see that from, in some places. 
Or in some cases, they're very literal. Sometimes the meaning of someone's name is, is like, uh, like Dandapani is a commonly known example. Dandapani means the guy with a stick in his hand. And that was what they called him, the guy with the stick in his hand, because he always went around with a stick in his hand. Yeah. Why not? <laughs> the long nails. Oh yeah, Dikhanaka, the yeah. guy with long nails. Exactly. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, um, Sadin and Saha. Yes. Does that means with? Yes. Right? Um, and that's just for emphasis? Like, I was trying to, uh, it appeared throughout the lessons, and I was trying to figure out the rhyme and reason for when it was used. It didn't seem like you, it. Yeah, it's when used in conjunction with the instrumental, it's basically, it's not adding any new information to the sentence. Um, so it's there yeah. for emphasis. It's most commonly used when someone is accompanied by people. Um, so it's not so commonly used to indicate an object. Usually it usually indicates people. Mm -hmm. But you do occasionally see the word um, uh, saha used uh, in other situations. So it's important to know the word saha. Like, like sahayaka, for example. Sahayaka, uh -huh. we see saha ayaka. Saha with ayaka, one who goes. So sahayaka is one who goes with you. So in that case, knowing that saha means with is useful because it clarifies the meaning of that word. Um, so it's worth. Uh, so it's also worth recognizing what these words are because you'll see them in sentences. So you need to know what they mean. Uh, so the reason we learn Pali again is not to write Pali uh, per se, but be, to be able to read the suttas. At least that's why I'm teaching it. Um, so my goal is that by the time we're done with these classes, we'll all be reading suttas in Pali. And is that the only preposition? Or are there other prepositions? Uh, what's a preposition again? It's a, like a through word, so... Yeah, we don't really have to How we teach it in grade school I'm down on is the, around the, uh, the B in the box. So a B can be in, or on, or around, or through, those are all prepositions. Yeah, we don't use those in Pali. Okay. Um, occasionally that role is fulfilled by a prefix on another word, but there's no standalone word for prepositions for the most part. They're all baked into the declensions. Yeah, so like yeah. it's like... That's why Saha keeps tripping me up, so like, why is this random preposition? But, well, yeah, that's what's weird. Saha, because if you don't have Saha, you won't go to the later plural or the instrumental plural. Um, Mm, that's one place where it would make a distinction, but generally speaking, you can tell by context mm. whether it's instrumental or ablative. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, you just really can't tell. Yeah. In which case, you can accept that lack of clarity with joy. <laughs> <laughs> you can't, you can, no consternation, it's just joy. Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's actually fairly rare that you encounter a sentence where you really can't figure out the meaning of a particular word by context, where it might have two or three meanings. And in that case, joy arises because now you realize that there are multiple ways to understand that sentence. So joy Rather than if you read a translation, you'll generally just see one way, right. and you won't realize that the translator is selecting one of multiple ways. So joy arises because you just realized you got a deeper understanding of the range of possibilities of that particular text. So it's always joy. For me, it's always joy. Okay, all right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions before I move on? Okay. Uh, smile. I don't smile. Smile. Okay. So, instrumental. <laughs> uh, next is ablative. So, ablative means from. So, or, or based on. So, I came from the Buddha. <clears throat> Uh, would be buddha, or possibly buddhamha, or possibly buddhasma. So ablative uh, frequently has multiple forms that you'll see. Mm -hmm. And this is another case where we see the same declension used in multiple places. So plural, nominative, buddha, singular, ablative, buddha. But you'll almost always be able to tell by the sentence which one it is. Um, so, ablative, from, either in a literal sense of location of origin, or it can be uh, from in an abstract or philosophical sense. 
Um, like, based upon this information, one can conclude this other information. That would be a use of ablative. Like, from the knowledge of karma, there is the knowledge of rebirth. Um, you would use the ablative in that case. So it can, it's from also in an abstract or philosophical sense. Any questions so far? No questions? Uh, the main thing with, with ablative is just recognizing the different forms it can take. So uh, amha and asma are unique to ablative. You won't see that anywhere else. Uh, so in the plural though, you'll notice buddhehi can be either instrumental plural or ablative plural. Again, you just need to look at the context. Don't be disturbed by that. In fact, again, you can take joy in this because there's that fewer uh, declensions you have to remember. So instead of there being lots of different declensions, there's slightly fewer declensions to remember. You just know that ehi can be either instrumental or ablative, and either way it's plural. Yeah? Uh, could you uh, give an example of that sentence for all knowledge? Uh, or, Oh gosh, not off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, it's good there. Yeah, I, I'm not so good at composing spontaneous poly sentences on the fly. Right. Yeah. yeah. So my, I should uh, just to be perfectly honest. I never developed poly as a spoken language or a language of communication. Um, I developed poly as a, again, for the sake of reading the suttas. That was the sole reason I learned Pali. Not quite the sole reason, also because in monasteries you chant in Pali. And it's nice to know what it is. Uh, but the primary reason is to read the suttas. So that's the angle that I'm teaching this from. So if you want conversational Pali, you came to the wrong class. <laughs> um, plus, you're not there yet, trust me. Um, if you want conversational Pali, they might offer that somewhere in Asia, but not here. Okay, are we oh. good? Ablative, yes. So why are there three different types? I mean, is it... Um, of ablative? Yeah. Um, because languages are organic rather than constructed, which means that languages often have extraneous things which aren't needed. Okay, so there's no um, different flavor to it. No, there is no distinction between buddhamha and buddhasma. These have exactly the same meaning. It's only important to know the difference because you'll see both forms. Okay. So we need to know that both of them are ablative singular. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Is it that there is no like distinction in meaning? Or is it that throughout the times that the distinction has been lost? Um, it's possible that there is some slight distinction. However, philologists, uh, people who study language, have poured over the Buddhist texts very carefully and sussed out a lot of these fine distinctions of meaning. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm fairly confident that if there was a relevant distinction in meaning, they would have figured it out. There are some areas on the fringes of the Pali language where scholars are not quite sure what certain things mean with precise detail. But even there, they have a general idea. Um, because also, things, things which cannot be discerned purely within Pali, they can compare to other Sanskritic languages um, and get some sense. Um, so it's possible that there's some slight shade of variation in meaning, but I wouldn't worry about it. Um, if there is, it's not significant enough to, to be relevant. Anything else before I move on? Okay. So then we have dative. So buddhaya or buddhasa for the singular and buddhanam for the plural. Dative indicates uh, what something is for. Um, so you might hear someone chanting Namo Buddhaya. So that means homage for the Buddha. 
Um, this is also a case where you could say to, uh, homage to the Buddha, but it needs to be clarified that in that case that's um, to in the sense of um, what something is going to, it's what something is for. So, for example, namo tasa bhagavato arhato sama sambuddhasa, that's all dative. Namo tasa bhagavato arhato, I'll explain that later because that's a much more complicated issue. Uh, sama sambuddhasa, buddhasa. So it's for um, namo tasa, for him, homage for him, sambuddhasa, for the, the awakened one. Mm. So, the buddhaya ending is distinctly dative. You'll only see that in the dative form. The buddhasa, that asa ending, you may also see in the genitive form. But before we move on to genitive, are there any questions around dative? Or anything else we've covered so far? Yeah? I've always thought of it as two, like, just from what dative means, like, to, you know, to give. So mm -hmm. if I trend it in my head like that, Am, am I going to encounter well, any problems? My main issue is that then it can get a bit mixed up with accusative. This is one reason why I prefer for, for data. This is for him. Um, because it's also indicating purpose. Mm -hmm. Data indicates purpose. Like, this is for the purpose of Nibbana. Mm -hmm. Nibbanaya. Yeah. Uh, is, you'll see that uh, very often in the suttas, actually, the Buddha will say this this practice is nibbanaya. Mm -hmm. uh, it's for nibbana, so it's for the purpose of nibbana, or uh, viragaya. It's for the purpose of dispassion. Mm -hmm. So it's another way you could translate data is its purpose. Mm -hmm. It indicates the purpose of something. Okay. So yeah, I would recommend sticking with for okay. for data. Any other questions? Um, yeah. So uh, when they say Buddha Sarana Chapa, that's that's one of the four, right? But could you explain why the other three are not applicable? Um so Buddhang, do you, can you guess what declension that is? Accusative. Yes. Okay, I was actually asking that, right, but we can go with that. <laughs> um, I'm a little lost, so thank you for Okay, how about Saranam? What declension is Saranam? Uh, that's data, isn't it? No. So it's accusative. accusative. So the word is sarana. So sarana is accusative. So buddhang, sarana. They're both the accusative case. Oh, that's so, how the dot is pronounced. So uh, buddhang sarana gachami. Gachami means I go. So I go to. Buddhang Sarana. I go to the Buddha refuge. That is literally what that means. Buddhang Sarana Gachami. I go to the Buddha refuge. Dhammang Sarana Gachami. I go to the Dhamma refuge. Sanghang Sarana Gachami. I go to the Sangha refuge. That's what it literally means. So saying I go to the Buddha for refuge is not literal. I mean, it's, it's okay. It, commun it communicates the connotation of the sentence, but not its precise denotation. Um, so this is one of the challenges of learning Pali strictly from other people's translations, is that translations are often not very literal. Um, I go to the Buddha refuge. So, and that also indicates another element of Pali, which is that you'll, uh, there's no distinction between nouns and adjectives. Um, so, in order to determine the nouns and adjectives uh, in a sentence, you just look for all the words that have the same declension. So, buddhang and saranang are both accusative. Mm -hmm. So, we know that those are both adjectives describing the same noun. Um, and realistically, either one can be a noun, or either one can be an adjective, because there's no difference in Pali. In Pali, nouns are adjectives, adjectives are nouns. There's no distinction. So the buddhang saranang, it's either a refuge that's the Buddha, or it's the Buddha that's a refuge. Either way is correct. So, could you reverse the positions of, could you say, saranang, Generally speaking, with some rare exceptions, generally speaking, in Pali, you can 
completely jumble the order of words and the sentence will have exactly the same meaning. You could literally scramble the words and it would have the same meaning. There's some exceptions to that which will come much later on, but generally speaking, that's how it is. Is that even the case with the genitive case? I know that's skipping ahead, but... We'll get there. Yeah, that's, okay. what I was that's one exception. Oh, okay. We'll get there. Cool. Yeah. I have a question for David. Um, can it ever be metaphorical, or can for ever mean like because, <clears throat> like there but for the grace of God go I? Apologies to bring Christian out of this, but like, you know, like, like. No, because would be instrumental. Okay. Um, yeah, instrumental. So for is. Sorry. No, please go ahead. Um, so data, it's for the purpose of for never means. Like, it's never cause. I don't have the words for it either, so. No, cause yeah. would be um, ablative or instrumental. Okay. So if you wanted to say, because of this, that happened. Because of this would be instrumental. Um, or if you were to say, um, or you might use ablative. Like, mm -hmm. from the existence of this, there is the existence of that. So that's where you use the ablative case. Okay, okay. So uh, a classic example of this is in dependent origination. Avija pachaya sankhara. Avija pachaya is ablative. So from the condition of ignorance. So when ignorance exists, mm -hmm. there is sankhara. There are uh, formations. Okay. So that's the case of ablative, meaning like when this is true, then something else is true. Mm -hmm. Okay, that makes sense. Okay. Is anyone totally lost? Me. Okay. We'll continue. So how can we <laughs> clarify things for you? We will get there somehow. <laughs> continue. Okay. Um, can you tell me what's not making sense and we'll help make it clear? All of it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, I'll send you the book the okay. ebook that we're studying and then you can study up on it because okay. you're coming next Sunday as well. I've already decided. <laughs> I'll be here. Oh, oh yeah, you'll be here for the retreat, so you'll stay for the poly class. Yes, sir. Great. <laughs> That's covered. So, we just covered dative. Are we all okay on dative? Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Any questions from Facebook? Okay. So, uh, next is genitive. And a genitive primarily indicates ownership. Um, ownership uh, can also sometimes indicate origin, uh, but generally it indicates ownership. So, um, uh, for example, buddhasa savako, the disciple of the Buddha. So buddhasa savako, we could also translate the Buddha's disciple. Um, or buddhasa savako, the disciple belonging to the Buddha. So genitive indicates um, of or belonging to. Um, it can also indicate origin in the sense of like uh, sandalwood from mm, uh, Benares. <laughs> yeah, they have the best sandalwood. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently in the time of the Buddha, Varanasi, uh, modern-day Benares, had all the best stuff. Yeah, except Kasi. Kasi apparently had better cloth. Uh, but Benares had all kinds of amazing stuff. Great sandalwood, great materials, all kinds of amazing stuff. So look here, Bhante, this is where the word or like Alex was saying, because that's what got me. It has to be in that order, otherwise. Yep, yeah, I, so buddhasa savako would be a phrase. So that phrase could be transported throughout the sentence, but the phrase has to stick together. Okay. And any, any, of, any of the genitive uh, Well, together. no, actually it doesn't have to stick together. Again, it depends on what else is in the sentence. Okay. Uh, in some sentences it would have to stick together or else it would get confusing as to who belongs to the Buddha. Right. Uh, but in some sentences it wouldn't make any difference if they were separated. Uh, so. Anyway, we'll get to that. So okay. let's not muddy the waters too soon. 
for the time being, let's just stick to saying that for the most part, word order is irrelevant. Except sometimes. Okay, muddying the water, <laughs> which we're not going to do. No, I'm not. Some people are already confused, and we don't want to confuse people any farther. <laughs> So for the genitive and the dative, it's just basically the same. What do you mean? Because uh, the like the plural and the 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 plurals are the same, and then the singular is very similar. Yes, this is very common, and in fact, in as I recall, and I'd have to look it up because I don't remember off the top of my head because there's several different stem forms, and they all have their own particular peculiarities. But generally speaking, the genitive and dative forms are the same. So in many grammar charts, these are combined. It just says genitive dative. It doesn't make any distinction between the two because there's generally no difference between the declensions for genitive and dative. So this, uh, the I uh, declension for singular dative um, <coughs> for the masculine A stem root is very unusual, because there's generally not a separate dative form from genitive. So it's notable here, because it's unusual. Generally, genitive and dative are the same in appearance, but different in meaning. So it's another case where you have to go on the sentence, like, Buddhasa Sabako, is that the Buddha's disciple, or is it the disciple for the Buddha? You have to go on the context to determine which one it is, whether it's genitive or dative. Yeah. You know it's in Sanskrit because I know a lot in like La Mahayana, and they do the you know and also Nam Buddhaya, Nam Buddhaya, whatever they always use that instead of the Buddhasa. Dative is, seems to be far more common in Sanskrit yeah. than in Pali. Yeah. Okay. In Pali, dative very rarely has a distinct form. Okay. So do you think maybe it's like a Sanskritization or? Um, a lot of later Buddhist texts. Um, reflect the effects of Sanskritization. Mm -hmm. That's true. And, uh, yeah, and there's also a number of supposedly Buddhist Sanskrit texts which, based upon some linguistic abnormalities, were clearly translated from Pali into Sanskrit mm -hmm. uh, incorrectly. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, there's interesting things which you'll encounter like that. Uh, but today is not Sanskrit class. No. And I wouldn't be teaching it anyway. <laughs> um, maybe in a few years, but not today. Today we're learning Pali. Pali is a lot easier than Sanskrit anyway. So rejoice in that. Another opportunity for joy. <laughs> um, is anybody else feeling the joy? Okay, that's, that's a I'm feeling the joy. Yes, yeah, that's why. Right. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> All right. So two people in the room have joy. Um, so genitive indicates ownership. Yes, good. Ownership or origin. Origin, great. Um, and finally, we have locative. Can anyone guess what locative refers to? The place. place. Yes. So locative is location. Uh, it indicates in, at, or on, primarily. So. Um, which doesn't work terribly well with the Buddha because we don't do things on the Buddha. <laughs> that would be some very bad karma. Um, but more like, like a village. Um, so like Game would be in the village or at the village or um, uh, Pasane would be on the stone. Uh, Pabate, on the mountain. Uh, so in, at, or on. Those are the physical meanings of the locative sense. Uh, the more abstract use of the locative sense means uh, in terms of or about. Mm -hmm. So this is a text about the Buddha. You would use the locative sense. Uh, like a text uh, describing the Buddha. Uh, you'd use the locative sense. Mm -hmm. You could use the locative sense anyway. Um, or uh, no, like this. I'm the Buddha. What's that? No, it's fine. It's like you know, like the book on the Buddha, right? Yeah, it's the same thing in English. Yeah, yeah, on the Buddha means yeah. about the Buddha. Yeah. Huh. 
um, or uh, in terms of, um, I can't think of an example off the top of my head. Another way that locative is used is to mean when. So like, when this is true, then that is also true. So, it, yeah, so we would say like, in the case of a cat being on the window, then someone will take it down. So that's, a, that's where we use the locative. In the case of this, then that. Mm -hmm. uh, so locative can also mean a, uh, a situation or a hypothetical situation or a condition. So when this condition is present. Do you have an example of that in Pali? Because I'm thinking in English you usually need a, a whole clause. You need like a verb too. Like assuming that you are in this situation, like describing the situation well, requires the, a verb, right? Yeah, I mean the verb that's used is the omitted to be. Okay. So we'll come to this later. In Pali, the verb to be is often omitted. So yeah, it's could, implied. So you could be like, in the case that you're a Buddha, this thing is, is true. Yeah, So or, or it's like when a Buddha is present. Mm -hmm. So if you just encountered the phrase Buddha, that might mean when a Buddha exists. Hmm. Mm -hmm. So locative can mean when or in the case of. Oh. Or when something exists, or in the case of something being true, uh, then something would be in the locative case, and no other words would be, none of the other words I just mentioned would be there. Mm -hmm. So you just know that when something is in the locative, it may mean in the case of, or when this is true, or when this exists. Okay. Are we good so far? Any questions? <laughs> I see I take second place to the cat, <laughs> as usual. <laughs> so now the entire world knows that I take second place to the cat. I'm trying to distract you from the tripod. <laughs> um, so, these are the seven main Declensions, the seven main grammatical cases. The eighth one that we'll come to next week is the vocative case, which is when you're speaking to someone. So we'll, we'll deal with that next week. But for the time being, we'll just stick with these seven. Um, so again, before we move on to working with some specific examples, is there anything that needs clarification? Don't be shy. It's okay to admit you don't understand. I'm going to say no. Yes. <laughs> So for the ablative, what's that? Ablative. For the ablative, ablative. ablative. Yes. That, that just means from. Yes. So I came from Colorado. Colorado would be uh, in the ablative case. Colorado. Colorado. People huh. from Colorado say Colorado. Second one. Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> Colorado. Aham Aham ha. Aham Colorado Sma. I don't know all of that. What's that? No, Anne, Well, that's well. That's why you notice I didn't actually use the a uh, half oh, the time okay. because yeah. I my I switched into poly <laughs> mode and that verb sound disappears. Okay. The va mm -hmm. vowel sound disappears. Okay. <laughs> and there's no a ah sound in Pali. There's only a uh and uh, a. Ah. So uh, this is a, uh, this is a. Uh. So buddha na uh, buddha. Uh, so it's all frontal. Like the, the tongue doesn't move back. Um, not in the case of those a's, I guess. Your, the, the movement of the tongue has more to do with the consonants. Any other questions? <coughs> okay. Again, don't be shy to ask questions if you're confused about anything. That's how you learn is by asking questions. Okay. Um, would you put the board around, please? This means the entire world will see you, by the way. <laughs> so here's a handful of sentences that we can look at for the time being, to start to get us a sense of how some of these are used in context. 
So first just to ask, has everyone gone through the lessons and made some attempt to translate the sentences for themselves, to read the sentences for themselves? Some attempt. Okay, how did that go? Progress? Yeah, I went well. Great? Yeah. Progress? Good, good. There was a few fun sentences. Oh yeah, well, uh, if you marked the sentences that you had ch trouble with, you found challenging, and we can address them directly. I, I, I had very, I had difficulty finding vocabularies from the vocabulary lists. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one thing that you can get from the the website where that uh, PDF comes from is a glossary. The glossary is separate. Glossary is a list of words and their definitions. Oh. Um, you can also get uh, electronic poly dictionaries, which are a very handy thing. I found flashcards too that correspond to the, the Silva. Oh, cool. Text. Yeah. Flashcards on that website? Mm -hmm. um, on a website. Yeah, they're online. So maybe you could share her with her that yeah. material. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you had a hard time finding vocab words. I'm sorry to hear that. <coughs> Me too. So what you're saying is that you needed to spend more time looking at the vocab list. Yeah, I just need to spend more time doing that. Yeah. In general. So, let's look at some of these examples. This is only a handful. I have a lot more um, that we can look at uh, if we get through this in a reasonable amount of time. So starting at the top. Siho pa sa nasming kit tati. Makata rukhe su Thank you. So, anyone want to take a stab at some of this? Let's start with the first word. Um, anyone know what this word means? Yes. Lion. Lion. Correct. Siha is lion. What declension is this word? That's nominative. Nominative. Okay. Singular. So we have yes, lion. Singular. singular nominative. Lion. How about pasanasme? The stone. Correct. Hasana is stone. Oh. What is the declension? Sming. Uh, the applicant? Locative. Locative. Oh, correct. Locative. So, on, at, or in the stone? A on. Probably on the stone. Most likely. Most likely. It could be in the stone, but It'd probably be on the stone. <laughs> How about tit tati? Stands. So, what's the declension? That's third person. Singular? Yes. Present. So T, uh, this was not listed on the other side, but T is the third person singular present tense verb. Indicative. Yeah, what you said. Okay. <laughs> so Tit Tati is stands. So putting this all together, what does this first phrase mean? Lion stands on a stone. Let's go ahead and include the articles. The lion stands on the stone. Oh. The lion. Or a lion. Or a lion stands on the stone. Yeah, there's no articles in Pali for the most part. But when translating into English, it's important to include articles because for some reason we use them in this language. I know they don't use them in Chinese either. Um, so you should be quite happy that they don't use them in Pali because it's one less thing to worry about. <laughs> <laughs> so, si ho ha san nas ning tit tati. The lion on the stone stands. The lion stands on the stone. Is everyone okay so far? Mm -hmm. Does anybody, is anyone confused? Mm -hmm. Does anybody want further explanation? No. It's Does this make absolute, crystal clear, perfect sense to everyone in the room? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're reading Bali! Yay! <laughs> <laughs> so. Makata rukhesu charanti. Okay. So let's start with makata. What's this? Somebody else. Okay. Um, as much as I love a knowledgeable person, um, let's share the fun. No nominative plural? Correct. Nominative plural. It could also be what else? Ablative. Yes, it might also be singular ablative. Almost certainly not, but we'll keep that possibility in mind until we've looked at the rest of the sentence. So this is either nominative plural or ablative singular. Do we know what the word is? Monkey. Monkey, yes. Monkey. Um, will you please sorry, turn that sorry, volume sorry, off? Sorry, sorry. Mute, please. Oh, why are you still? 
I closed you. <laughs> so you need to turn the volume off. Okay, I that's did better. Turn the volume off, but so, focus. Makata means either monkeys, plural, or from the monkey, singular ablative. Okay? Rukhesu. Locative. What is it? I mean, it's locative, I don't know what it means. Though. Locative what? Oh, plural. So, locative plural, great. And what's the word? Trees. Trees, yes. So, in, on, or at the trees. Charanti. Close. Climb. So no. slower than running. Walks. Yeah. Uh, Charanti actually just means um, uh, moves or behaves. But it's commonly used to indicate just like walking or moving from place to place. Um, so it, it doesn't necessarily mean walking. It can just mean moving around. Mm -hmm. uh, it can also just mean like behavior or conduct. So, charuya, for example, uh, brahmacharya. Charuya means behavior. So, brahmacharya is the behavior of Brahma, the uh, holy behavior, spiritual behavior. So, charanti, and what's the declension? Third person plural. Third person, yeah, third person, third person plural, present tense verb. So, they go. Monkeys goes on trees. Monkeys move on trees. Um, it might be on trees. It can also mean among trees. Among so trees. trees. So locative can mean among. Um, um, there's another way to translate this phrase. Using me. all the information we already have. There's another way to translate this phrase. From the monkeys. They go among the trees from the monkeys. Does that make sense? Maybe Where's not. they? Maybe the not. trees go from um, the monkeys. It seems, no, because trees are not nominative. Um, they go among the trees from the monkeys. Who are so they? So, we don't know, because <laughs> okay. in Pali you do not need to have a subject. Oh, okay. you what? Can have, That's you great. do not need to have a subject. That's great. Because, <laughs> <laughs> because See, the verb already tells us that it's plural, so we know they go. This is a complete sentence. This is a complete okay, oh, focus. Oh yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. This is a complete <laughs> sentence. <laughs> no, it is, yeah. Uh, Charanti means they go. Complete sentence. So they go among the trees. Another complete sentence. Yeah, but there is a subject. It's just that it's the subject is implied. implied, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's just you confused me because you said that it doesn't need a subject. So it's like a statement. Okay. Like there is a subject, it's just not Yeah, seen. it's just the subject is implied. That's true. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Could it be so for example, if you are running away from monkeys through the trees, then you might say, Makata ruke so dhavanti. They run through the trees, yeah. they run among the trees away from the monkeys. They run away from the monkeys among the trees. <laughs> okay? So, it's a, I mean, based upon the adjacent uh, statement, uh, the lion stands on the stone, then we can guess that this is probably saying something in a similar way. The monkeys move among the trees. But just pointing out, there's another way to translate this sentence, and now you know. Uh, because another translator would see this, and they would just see monkeys move among the trees, and they would be completely oblivious. Uh, or they might just choose not to mention the other way of translating the sentence, Maybe because like, they might consider it unlikely or unnecessary to mention. Maybe it's like an omnicious thing, like, like they are running from the monkey around the trees, but they didn't know that there's a lion that stands on the stone. That's theoretically possible. Mm -hmm. um, any questions on that before we move on? Okay. Next. Samana gamamha upasakehi sadhing. My scribe left out a letter here. H. 
<laughs> Sorry. Playing the game. Yes. <laughs> That's what scapegoats are for. <laughs> for those catching live, that was a joke. Um, the process of scapegoating is bad karma, it's unwholesome and not to be done. So, there's another missing thing here. So it's important to note that Do you have N? Anyway. Do we have N with a dot over the N? Anyway, for now, these are two different letters. Oh yeah, we do also have N with a dot over. These are three different letters. Not to be confused. So N with a dot over, N with a dot under, and N with no dot. These are three different letters. How are they pronounced? The first one is pronounced like NG, and in that it's identical in sound to the N with a dot. Mm -hmm. Second one is just pronounced like an N, with your tongue against the back of your front teeth, so an N. And the last one is pronounced with your tongue uh, a little bit back from your teeth, against the roof of your mouth, a bit back from your teeth, so N. Okay. Um, it's a sound, so we don't have, it's called a cerebral consonant or a retroflex consonant, so anytime you see a consonant with a dot under it in Pali, that's a retroflex consonant, or cerebral consonant. But Indian languages have them. They're in Indian languages, they're not in Western languages. So most of us have no idea what the difference is. Because it's just not a distinction that we make. So, again, as I mentioned last week, the Pali alphabet has 42 letters. The English alphabet has 26. And that's because Pali has a lot more consonants than we do. It also has more vowels than we do. Um, the bright side of this, though, is that uh, the Pali language is always pronounced exactly the way it's spelled, which is a huge relief, because if you see something spelled correctly, you know exactly how it's pronounced. If you hear something pronounced correctly, you know exactly how it's spelled. The only challenging part is learning how to distinguish these sounds which are not found in uh, the languages the one already knows. So let's return to the sentence. Samana gamam ha upasake hi sadhing ne kamanti. Did you get that? Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. So, samana, what's this? Okay. Brownie points, well done. Um, so, samana, what's the declension? Nominative <laughs> plural. plural. Nominative plural, yeah, the a and a nominative plural. Or, uh, ablative. 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 Singular. Singular. Yes. Probably not in this case, though it's possible. So we'll keep that possibility in mind while we explore further. So samana, contemplatives, or from a contemplative. Mm -hmm. uh, Gamamha. Village. From the village. village. Correct. So gama, village. Mm -hmm. Amha, from. from. Gamamha, from the village. From the village. What's the declension called? Ablative. Ablative. Ablative plural. Oh, singular. 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 Ablative singular. Good. Upasakehi. Instrumental. So, ehi uh, is instrumental what? Plural. Instrumental plural. And you said the lay people. So it's or a bit more specific for the disciples. Devotees. Yeah, lay devotees or lay disciples. Mm -hmm. Um, and what does upasaka literally mean? Does anyone remember this from last time? One who stands close. One who sits close. Sits close. It could also be the ablative plural. Yeah. Uh, yes, it could be ablative plural. Um, so it's either uh, instrumental plural or ablative plural. So ehi can mean either with or it can mean from. So it's possible that the contemplatives are running away from the disciples, but I think that's unlikely. <laughs> More oh, likely... That's, you have the with after it. Uh-huh, yeah. which clearly yeah. indicates that it's instrumental. So this is one case where instrumental is helpful, because it makes it clear that it's... Uh, or one case where the preposition is useful. So it makes it clear what case we're talking about. So sadhing means with, um, so it's that extremely rare thing, a poly preposition. 
How about Nick Hamanti? Sets out. And what's the declension? Oh. Plural. Third person. Third verb. person. Plural. Verb. Present. Verb. Yeah. So Nick Hamanti. Uh, they, they depart, they leave, they set out. So putting it all together, somebody want to put this all together? Someone who doesn't talk very much, perhaps? Uh, okay, no you pressure. can pass. Okay, so okay. skipping the pressure, does anyone want to volunteer to read this sentence in English? What's Gamanha again? Gamanha? Gama means? Village. Village. And what's the declension Amha? Um, from? Yes, Ablatu. From. Yes. From. Yes. from. From. Gamam ha. From the village. Ah, makes sense now. Okay, so putting it all together, what's the sentence? Wise men with disciples go, uh, set out from the village. Good. Well done. Yay! Stan can do it. I think Stan will have to do it. No, I think Stan will just meow a few times and beg for food. Or affection. Or both. Food is affection. That is not a Buddhist statement. No? <laughs> no. <laughs> food is not affection. Food is food, affection is affection. Why? <laughs> Let's discuss Dhamma later. Now we discuss Pali. So, next statement we have here. Luddhiko tapasasa Deepang Dadati. Fun times. First word. Ludiko. Mm -hmm. Ludiko. Hunter. Hunter. Okay. Hunter. Singular. Nominative. Nominative. Good. Tapasasa. Locative. Uh, it is not genitive. locative. It might be genitive or. Dative. 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 Genitive or dative. So the asa ending can be either genitive or dative. And what's a tapasa? It's a hermit. Um, more precisely, it's an ascetic. So it's from the word tapas, which means heat or fire. Uh, so the idea was that ascetics were doing all these painful things to produce. Um, burning sensations in the body with the belief that making your body burn would burn up all your defilements as well. It would burn up your bad karma. So they would make their bodies burn through all these painful sensations and unpleasant experiences, believing that was burning up their bad karma. The Buddha was very clear that doesn't work. You can inflict all the pain on your body that you want. You're not clearing up your bad karma, you're just making more. Hurting yourself just makes more bad karma. It doesn't burn up your old bad karma. So tapasa is an ascetic, which yeah, I think in Pali Primer it's translated hermit, which, yeah, some tapasas were hermits and some weren't. Um, some would go right in the middle of the village to hurt themselves. Mm -hmm. You'll still see it, even these days, if you go to India, you'll see people hurting themselves out in public as other people worship them and think this is praiseworthy activity. So, tapasasa means... To the... So it has two possible meanings. What's one of them? Four. Anyone can answer, even if he knows all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to the aesthetic, or it can mean of the aesthetic. So. I would prefer to use for for right. data. For, so for, for the aesthetic or um, of the aesthetic. Yeah, so for the aesthetic or of the aesthetic. Deepam. Lamp. Yes, and what's the declension? Accusative. Accusative, singular, singular. correct. And dadati. Um, I think it's. Gives, correct. Mm -hmm. And what's the declension? Singular. singular. Present indicative. Great. Um, Random point to note here, this is the root, da, from which we get the word dana. Dana means giving, very literally. Dana means giving. It's from Spanish and Italian. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. Dana means giving. Oh, okay. 
Uh, yeah, Indo-European routes. Yeah. We'll find all kinds of clear correlations like that. So, let's put this all together. What are the different possible meanings for this sentence? There's at least two possible meanings that are readily apparent. What's one of them? The hunter gives the ascetic's lamp. So that's uh, correct, but not literal. Let's go with a literal translation. Gives the lamp of the ascetic. Okay, okay, yeah, that would be one translation. Yeah, so it might, it might be the hunter gives a lantern that belongs to the ascetic. Yeah. That would be one translation, the genitive. What's the other possible translation that's apparent? Gives a lamp for the ascetic? Yes. Yeah. And this is also a case where it's also important to use for instead of to because I might give a lamp to Sunny for Alex. This is a lamp for Alex. I'm giving you this lamp for mm -hmm. Alex. And then she would then hand it off to Alex. Or she might not. Or she might not, but either way, I gave it for Alex. So this is also why it's important to clarify that dative is for rather than to. Um, again, it's a minor distinction, uh, but just to keep that clear in one's mind. Any questions before we move on? Okay, so we're all absolutely crystal clear about the meaning of everything so far. Great. Um, I see some shifty eyes in the back. Uh, no pressure. Yeah, feel free to ask questions. What's that? There's a lot of pressure. We'll continue. Um, yeah, this is probably why I lost all my poly students in the past. <laughs> you won't lose me, but I won't talk until I'm ready. So. Okay. I can respect that. I can respect that. So, what's our next fun sentence here? Oh, this is the best one. It's my favorite sentence. That's, That's so, so beautiful. Cute. Uh, <laughs> Suryasa Alo. Alo Kada doesn't look right. Something is wrong here. <laughs> Suryasa Alo Ko. Alo Ko. There we go. Sorry. Um, no worries. <laughs> Suryasa aloko samodham hi patati. So let's take it one at a time. Suryasa. Singular. Singular, correct. Singular what? Dative. Or? Genitive. Or genitive, correct. Of the sun. Yes, of the sun, or possibly for the sun. We'll find out. Um, but most likely of the sun. The sun? Like, I've seen the big Like that fireball? thing up in the sky. Yeah, the giant oh, fireball. The sun. Oh, S-U-N. The sun. No, yeah, sun, S-O-N, is putta. Okay. Um, which, purely by coincidence, can also mean rotten. <laughs> no etymological correlation, so don't read too much into it. I can just very clearly imagine some scolding. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a putta putta. <laughs> uh, so, suryasa of the sun or for the sun, as in giant fireball star in the sky. <laughs> Aloko. Mm -hmm. Singular. Light. Nominative. Singular nominative, light. Excellent. Samudhamhi. No, oh, it's not. Uh, let me see. No, that's correct. Samudamhi. Samudamhi. Locative. Locative. Excellent. Singular. Singular. Ocean. Ocean. Um, so, ocean. in the ocean, on the ocean, at the ocean. Probably on the ocean. We'll get to that. First, let's say, first, uh, when approaching a poly sentence, often the best way to start is by identifying each word and the meaning of each word separately and then putting things together. <coughs> Right. This is also important because uh, it also avoids the risk of immediately assuming what a sentence means and then missing the possible variant readings. Mm. As we covered with Makata Rokesu Charanti, we look at it and immediately we think, oh, it's the monkeys moving among the trees. But actually, there's a different way of reading it. 
if we're a little more careful. So, coming back to this one, samudamhi patati. What's patati? Singular, Singular. verb. Verb. Present. False. False. So, putting it all together, someone want to say what they think this means? False. The light of the sun falls on the ocean. Correct. Or sunlight. Yeah. So it like the as the the sur, suryasa that can mean the light of the sun or the light from the sun. It doesn't change the meaning. In English, it doesn't change the meaning, but in Pali, it's important to clarify um, that it's not ablative. Mm. It's the light of the sun. Mm. Uh, now another way to translate this is taking the data. Light. So light so falls on the ocean for the sun. Does that make sense? In a particular context, it might. But generally speaking, no. Generally speaking, it's the light of the sun. It makes more sense. But it's always worth playing with your mind. When there are multiple ways of translating something, play with the different options in your mind and see, does this work? Does this make sense? Um, and also, it's, it's within the context of other sentences. So taking these sentences in isolation, we have a broader framework uh, of possible meanings. But within the context of a paragraph, we'll see more, uh, more clearly what it probably means. Um, so some philologists will actually say that a word by itself has no meaning. A phrase by itself has no meaning. Even a sentence by itself has very little meaning. Um, that a paragraph is actually your first full-fledged statement, because that's when you have context for the sentences. Anyway. And ma let's see, make sure that's fully clear. Macha pitakamha patanti. Mm -hmm. Let's take it one at a time. Macha nominative plural. plural. Nominative plural. Fishes. Fishes, good. Pitakamha ablative. Ablative. Singular. Singular, good. Oh, basket from the basket. Basket from the basket, yeah. Patanti should be easy. They fall. They fall. Yeah, it's the same verb, just now it's plural. So, putting it together. Somebody other than the guy who knows all the answers. Fish falls from the basket. Yeah, the fishes fall from the basket. So, pitika. What does this word sound like? Hmm. Does this sound familiar? Like the Sutta Pitika? Yes, actually. Strange. Yeah. So, the Buddhist scriptures are collectively called uh, Tipitaka or Tripitaka. So, the uh, Ti or Tri, which looks suspiciously like the word three, uh, Tri means three, or Ti means three. Um, so, the Tipitaka or Tripitaka is the three baskets. The three baskets! Yeah, so the three baskets uh, into which they collected the recorded teachings of the Buddha. Cute. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, any questions so far? Is there an alternative reading for, which for that last sentence? Because it could be from the fish. Uh, like, they fall they from fall. the fish, from the fishes, from the basket. Mm. It's theoretically they, like, possible. They fall from the fish basket, because you said that if they're declined the same, it could be an adjective. Mm, but they're not declined the same because this is plural and this is singular. Oh, that was okay. good. That was a good. Right. That was right. good. And yeah. again, you could possibly stretch it. So, for example, if there were little tiny people who were stuck in a basket full of fishes, <laughs> then they might be falling away from the fishes and falling away from the basket at the same time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so that is theoretically <laughs> possible. So bonus points for doing exactly what I said, which is sussing out possible alternate meanings for sentences. But what about, like, the water? If it's describing the water. What do you mean? Like, like the, the water, water is falling, falling from the fishes and from the basket onto the floor? Well, generally speaking, in Pali, it would just say one or the other. And most likely it would be basket. Yeah, it'd just be the water is falling from the basket. The water falls from the basket. That'd be most likely. Okay, any other questions? 
So, um, could I have a volunteer to flip the board around again, please? Um, go around the back, around the back, please. Thank you. That's hard. <laughs> Yeah, one of the sentences that from the homework that I had a question on was like that, where I was like, I this could be clear. Okay. Great, thank you. Which was the sentence from the homework you wanted to address? Uh, it was um, lesson six, uh, number three, I believe, or four. Oh, me too. Um, lesson yeah. six, yeah. number three. Three or four? Which one? Number four. Yeah. For Vanajanang Asa Kasakasagamang Dhavanti? Yes. So let's take it one word at a time. Uh, do we want to write this out for the benefit of our remote viewers? You probably would. You probably would. Okay, can I have a scribe to come write this out? Scribe, anyone other than me. My handwriting is not very good. Go for it. Okay. Yeah. So you can erase what's on the back and write it out. And maybe while you're doing that, then... Does um, someone have it? To... Um, I mean, I have it on my screen, but that's not going to help you turn too much. No, no. Okay. It, do you have the PDF open? Yeah, I do. It's page nine. Yeah, page nine, exercise six, sentence number four. So, here's your eraser and your chalk right here. The back, on the back. Back? Okay, back on the back. Because I'll be talking about okay. what's on the front. Um, so, just a, a brief review of the seven declensions we're covering so far. So, starting with the top, and I'd particularly like to hear from people who have not, who I've not yet heard from. Nominative. What's the nominative case? So, nominative is the uh, the subject of the sentence, the actor, the person who is performing the action. Okay. So, buddho. Uh, so, for example, you say, uh, the Buddha teaches, it would be Buddha. Buddha teaches, the Buddha teaches. Okay? Is that clear? Uh, what's accusative? Wait, let's let her answer. Um, it's, what so it's what the action is happening to. Oh, do I see that? Yeah, so it's the direct object. These are some of the few English grammatical terms I actually know. So the accusative is the direct object. So if something is happening to the Buddha, then it's buddha. Okay? Um, any questions on that? So if it's happening uh, to the Buddha, if the Buddha is the object to which something is happening, if it's the, the object of the action, so I go to the Buddha, it would be accusative, Buddha. And what's instrumental? With, using, via. So let's, let's let the people who have given less input um, say something. So what's instrumental? Are you talking to me directly now? <laughs> um, there's, there's two people who I'm particularly hoping oh, okay. will answer because I want everyone to learn the stuff thoroughly. So instrumental. That's so called. What's that? With has to do with what? Yes, with, with. Correct. So instrumental is. So so what is bud, So what would budhena mean? It's instrumental. So you just said instrumental means with. So what does budhena mean? Buddha, ena. So ena means with. Buddha. So budhena means the with the Buddha. Something you do with the Buddha? Correct. Okay. Um, so buddhena by itself just means with mm -hmm. the Buddha. Uh, with the Buddha. Okay. Do you see how that works? So uh, again, these are all where's my chalk? These are all suffixes. So from the word buddha, we add the suffix. So buddha plus o equals buddho. Buddha plus ang equals buddham. Buddha plus ena equals buddhena. So it's the last part of the word itself that you're supposed to really focus on? 
Yes, that's where the, that's how we learn uh, the meaning of the word within the sentence. So buddhena is a single word that in English we would use a whole phrase for. So the phrase would be with the Buddha. Does that make sense now? Yes. Okay. Um, so this is dramatically different from English, which is why Pali is sometimes difficult to learn uh, for people from an English-speaking background. Um, Western languages in general don't work this way, except for Latin and... Uh, German. Really? German works this way. I think so. Mm. I don't know uh -huh. German, but I know that it has the... the clean well, because I actually did study German in high school, and I don't remember it being like this. But that was a long time ago, and I don't remember anything. I think that Latin, because they, they, German's a glutinating, they just throw things together. I haven't studied German, but I know that they have nomiativo, accusativo. Okay, so, focus, focusing. So, uh, an ablative. Do we remember what ablative is? From? From, correct. So, for example, buddham ha would mean what? Something from the Buddha? Yes, from the Buddha. Correct. And what's dative? Go ahead. Two. Mm, not so much two as four. Correct. Four. Yeah, so four. The purpose of the Buddha? Or just for the Buddha. Like this is a gift for the Buddha. So it's not necessarily the purpose of it, it's to give him something? Yeah. Um, it can be purpose, but it can also just indicate like this is for the Buddha. Okay. Is it for the Buddha or what is for the Buddha? Well, whatever it is, it's for the Buddha. So the point is this phrase just means for the Buddha. Okay. Yeah? So. Can we take like a name and then do the same thing for like for these things? Like say if we take your name, can we say mm -hmm. Suda sa, sa, sa and be like um, you this could. T is Suda sa, sa Yeah, so for example, anytime I've been involved in a ceremony that involved poly chanting that included a name, then you would see my name decline. So for example in my ordination ceremony, uh, there's Sudasasa and Sudasaya and Sudasena and uh, whenever I've been involved in formal katina ceremonies, similarly, my name is included and declined appropriately. So yeah, if you had a gift for me, which I highly encourage, it would be <laughs> Sudhasaya. It's a gift for Sudhaso. Sudhasaya. Mm -hmm. And after that, then it would become Sudhasasa, belonging to Sudhasa. <laughs> Uh, we just jumped a bit ahead of ourselves. So next, what is genitive? Particularly asking the people who have not spoken very much so far. Ownership of something? Correct. So, buddhasa, what does buddhasa mean? Something the Buddha owns. So, of the Buddha, belonging to the Buddha. So this phrase means of the Buddha or belonging to the Buddha. Okay. So you can't say the Buddha owns something? Well, that would be a whole sentence with its own verb. Oh. So the point is that this, this word here mm -hmm. means of the Buddha, or belonging to the Buddha. Okay. okay? Um, it's basically the same as uh, how we use apostrophes. So buddhasa is like saying buddhas, okay. like it belongs to the Buddha. That's Buddha's gift. Okay. It belongs to the Buddha. So buddhasa is basically the same. It's saying it's the Buddha's It's like when you, thing. you get your gifts tomorrow, they belong to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Can we say that Stan belongs to, like, Giovanna? No, because Stan belongs to himself. <laughs> uh, Giovanna helps take care of Stan. But Stan does not belong to Giovanna. That but, would be slavery, and slavery is wrong. But but we were referring to a, a 
when we're talking to people and we say Giovanna's cat, doesn't that mean stand? Oh, yeah, in that case it'd be Giovanna's uh, yeah, Giovanna's uh, Bellaro, Giovanna's cat. Okay, 